OK, this is working. So yeah, uh, the his a short history of browser scope, if any of you are familiar with Steve's UA Profiler project, and or perhaps saw my talk last year, I've always been fascinated with collecting browser data. And you know, various ways of doing that include databases, and email, and spreadsheets. And browser scope sort of represents a way to do that in the cloud. And it started as a way to store my own data, and then to store Steve's data, and then to compare and pivot on it and look at browsers. So uh, it's browserscope.org. And as you might be able to read here, we show you know, people running their tests. We show the tests they've run. We have test categories on Browserscope. These are the things that we sort of deemed valid tests of browsers and quality. And uh, we were lo always looking to get more tests on this page. Um, the goals of Browserscope are sort of multi you know, there's a few. We really wanted to try to raise some of the issues with some of the tests. For instance, the rich text test. This is stuff that developers really suffer with, but which maybe doesn't make it into the typical blog post. So we wanted to make a test suite and really provide an easy way for browser vendors to go, oh, we can make this better. Look, we can make the score go up. This is a good thing for developers. It's a good thing for users, too, because it removes code pads. Um, we, and so for the web developers, we want to be a resource. We, you know, how much of this stuff can you possibly remember? How, how many of you know how many network connections every browser opens today? Eh, it's tough, right? And then you want to know about mobile. You want to know about you know, your users. These are all important pieces of data. And it's better to store this and get medians in the wild. And obviously, we want them to be faster and safer. Uh, just a quick look at the numbers since last September. We've gotten a lot of test results. I suspect this is a lot of developers running these tests. but it's a huge swath of browsers. So even that, you know, the notion that it's just developers running these tests, I think, doesn't hold much weight. This is you know, a lot of data. For a test that's JSKB, which is at the bottom, which is a test of um, JavaScript compatibility across browsers, it already has almost 3,000 results and 134 user agents. So we get a lot of hits there. But what I really want to talk about today is something we put up in April. And the idea is, you write these tests. We know you do it. And where do you store the data? It's inconvenient to store this data locally. Writing a database to do it is something you could all do. But having spent the work to write browser scope to use task queues and store all of this data in the cloud, we wanted to share that. So we have a, a user test feature of browser scope, where you can write a test, host it on your server, and you just beacon your results data back to us. You can look at that data in the browser scope results table. You can get it out in JSON or CSV or Python pickle. But, and we automatically aggregate that by user agent. So I want to do a little bit of demos here. These slides are on my blog, which is idreamofuni.com. It's on the first slide. I'll put it up again. But let me, I want to do a little demo here. So this is an example of something you might do as a user. Oh, size. Let's see. How's that? Better? Bigger? There's not much on this page. There's just a test for array slice support. So the array object in JavaScript sometimes has the slice method and sometimes doesn't. In, um, Let's see. So in Firefox, it does, it does, and in Chrome, it doesn't. So what's the quickest way to gather this data? You just tell all your friends to go hit this page, and eventually it just starts to flesh itself out. To show you what the code looks like for doing a user test, it's pretty trivial. Here's our test for array slice. Um, we look at the type. Oh, we can actually increase the font a little bit for you. So we look at the type of array.slice, and then we look, is it undefined? And we set just a simple Boolean. And we set a class name so we can see red or green. Um, I've even got a callback here to run a callback. But eventually, we just create a little object with a test key, array.slice support, and the value, and inject this snippet of code, which sends the beacon over to browser scope. So that's all you have to do. Host your tests, start storing data, and share it with your friends. An ex example test that's doing this today has been the HTML5 test. This is a fellow named Niels Lanier, and you might have come across his test either on Ajaxian or on some of the forums out there. He gets a lot of test data. So he's been a good uh, test for the user test feature of browser scope. This, it doesn't show it today, but he's beaconing all the results back to browser scope. 
And so we have the test data for HTML5. And the idea here is that we'll promote a test to BrowserScope's homepage if we think, wow, OK, you're getting a lot of traffic. And this test would be useful for web developers. It would be a useful way to gauge browsers and the, how they affect our summary scores. I think this test today may need a little bit more work, but writing the code to make it possible is something you can see here. So we've got the HTML5 test plugged into the summary category and on the home page. This, this isn't live yet, but it's something you can see in action. And it might be an incentive for you to go write a test case and get data and send us an email. There's a, a Google group for this, and we'll get your test into the main suite of browser scope tests. So there's a link at the bottom here for how to write a user test. Um, there's a few other tests here. This second one is kind of fun. I'll, I'll show that one, too, because this one was sort of interesting. It's just a UI test where you go and we have you know, two different ways to select. Oh, I think it was Estonian I have to select. I don't even remember. Italian, thank you. Fright. So Tamil and Bulgarian. OK. So we beacon the results, and now I choose Italian. It's the same list, but this one makes me do the scrolly thingy, right? Tamil. And so this test wouldn't be very good if you got good at it over time. But the context of this test is that we wondered, could we improve the time to selection speed by changing a UI element? So this was actually for something in, at Google where we want to test this UI. The amount of work it takes to build a, you know, a test for this in a you know, really big product is non-trivial, whereas the amount of work it takes to write a browser scope test is pretty trivial. And it's not the best data necessarily, but it's pretty good. And you can see that over you know, users using desktop browsers, the time to choosing the correct result is definitely better, at least a half a second, if not more. And we can look, oh, look, on the iPhone, which I would suspect anyway, this is nowhere near as good as the native select. So we should not do this on mobile phones. So as just a really quick way to benchmark a simple test, hopefully BrowserScope can help you, and you can write a user test. So I would take any questions if you have them, and thank you very much. All right. Yes? Yes, BrowserScope's an open source project on code.google.com. And you can download the project. And it, it's actually an App Engine app. So you just deploy to another app ID on App Engine. And you can run the whole stack. Y you couldn't host it. You could download the data and inject it into your app, yes. But it wouldn't, there's no utilities for doing that today. Anything else? Thanks. <laughs>